So I guess I'll, I'll just say to begin with, you know, so it's about 15 years ago that a couple of grad students at Stanford set up shop in a dorm room and set something up they called PageRank. Um, and one of them was named Larry Page, pun intended, I believe. Um, and the other one was Sergey Brin. And um, their story is now pretty much the stuff of, of legend. Um, and uh, they pretty much upended the portal business. They showed the world that search was something important. And they had this dream of making all the world's information accessible. And they are continuing on that path. <clears throat> and the path um, that you have laid out in, in an incredibly well documented book has at times been a tough one and gets tougher um, as their dreams sort of hit against, I think, some of the realities of the world. The, the company's tough, not the book, right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, book is, the book is actually, you know, and it's one of these things where I'm so interested in it. It's always hard for me to tell for sure if everyone will be, but if you were at all interested in it, I found it a, a, a great, fascinating read, and I learned some things about the company. My first question to you, though, I, you have been covering the Valley in technology for a while. Why did you pick Google as the focus of your latest book? I first came across Google when it was pretty early in its history, and it was just starting to get noticed uh, around the world, really, uh, as a much more effective way to find things on the internet. People thought that search was cured, right? And that, uh, it was as good as it was going to get. And then Google came along, and it was something so good that it was different. And it was transformative. It not only could you find what you wanted, but it opened up new frontiers so people could start things knowing they could be found. And I think I had to meet these people because you know, I was excited about it. And just to see, because when new things start out, I always want to know, is this going to be something which is a, a nice development? or something where I really have to know the people behind this company. They're going to matter. They're going to be, you know, uh, make a difference in our lives. So I went down to the Googleplex as it was then, which was the first bigger building they moved into. I, I knew the public relations person, uh, uh, Cindy McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. from, uh, she was from Apple Computer. I knew her then. And I said, Cindy, I want to meet these guys. It was October of 1999, and as it happened, it was the Google celebration of Halloween. And Larry was dressed like a Viking in a big fur vest, and you know, had a hat with big horns coming out of it, and Sergey was dressed like a cow with these huge, disgusting udders, plastic udders coming out, and the cow and the Viking took me into a room and described page rank to me. And, uh, there was something about them which was compelling. And I thought, and as it grew to an important company and then had this IPO and it turned out to be an incredibly successful business, I thought this, this could be worth a book. At that time, there were a couple books going on it. Right. And I thought I'd, I'd let them go, you know, and I went to something else. But I felt there was something about this company which was not only different in what it gave us, but different on its own terms. The ethos and I, of it, you felt and it was And that different. really hit home for me in the summer of 2007, when I was invited to go along with some young Google managers. They have a program called Associate Product Managers, who are really the future leaders of Google. They are people who are paid uh, to be not only skilled in an engineering sense, but an entrepreneurial sense as well. And every summer, uh, Marissa Mayer, one of the mm -hmm. you know, you know, key executives of Google, takes these young leaders, these, these uh, product managers, uh, to visit Google offices around the world. And I was invited to go along on this trip. We literally went around the world to Tokyo, Beijing, Bangalore, and Tel Aviv. And I spent 24-7 with those people, unmediated, which was sort of a rare experience for a journalist. And Inside the company, I realized it was much more interesting than I thought. It was not just all those things I said before, but there was a, a cultural movement going on there, that, that these people were steeped in, in the future in a way that the predecessors in the business hadn't been. 
and you know, I got a sense of what their values were, and I later learned that they were really directly channeled from Sergey Brin and especially Larry Page. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to tell the story of Google as much as possible from the inside, mm -hmm. to get that experience I had with this group of 18 engineers for, with the company of 20,000 people as it was then. And I thought, if I could write that book, that could be something. And that's what I tried to do. Well, you certainly did get inside. And I wondered a couple of things. And we're going to get on to what you saw on the inside in a minute. But first, how long did it take you to actually do this? And how much access were you actually given to Google in the process? I, I started the book in, a, in you know, a pretty intense matter in June 2008. Um, so it was almost three years. And uh, I asked for a lot of access. Basically, the most important thing was to be able to talk to anyone I wanted to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to sit in on a number of meetings, events, other things that go on there. But mainly, it was talking and talking again. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to the people at Google, not just Larry and Sergey and Eric, but the people who you never heard of who were key to Google. The, you know, there was a, a number of people, as it turns out, inside of Google who were very important in developing its products. They were superstars, but they were unknown to ev everyone else. And they were influential in the company. And sometimes they were just wonderfully strange. And these were the people I wanted to spend time with. And not just once, but sometimes multiple times. And, mm -hmm. and my time at Wired, actually, the same month I started serious work on this book, I began full time at Wired magazine. I left Newsweek and uh, shifted to Wired, though, uh, as John mentioned, I've been writing for Wired for quite a, quite a, quite a long time as, as a freelancer. And it was a terrific synergistic experience uh, that I was able to sometimes spin off articles with, with Google's permission, you know, because mm -hmm. basically everything I did inside of Google was for the book, unless we had mutual con consent uh, otherwise. Um, and that would help me. Can I just interrupt for a minute? Because didn't, didn't Sergey say to you, why, don't you, why are you releasing a book? Why, why don't you just release right. little chapters at a time? Um, yeah, there, there's a paradox here. Maybe we'll talk about the book, uh, Google book search later on. But it's a company that, that takes books very, very seriously as a corpus of information. But the two founders you know, aren't really book people in terms of their own preferences there. And uh, you know, when Sergey said that, 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 that to me, uh, he had said it to another book writer earlier, I, I, I remembered uh, reading, and I thought, you know, you know, he, it, it doesn't have the same seriousness. And sometimes, huh? you know, working on a Wired article, he would spend a little more time with me. He, spent, he never spent as much time as he did at Newsweek in the early days, of course. We'd come to New York and we'd have lunch, or, uh, you know, uh, and he was much more accessible. Google would come out with a new product, and it would be Sergey on the phone telling you about it, or you'd call up on an issue, and they'd say, hold on, Sergey wants to get on the phone. And uh, you know, in later years, and maybe we can talk about that too, Larry yeah. and Sergey were, were, were tougher gets, but you know. That, well, they're bigger. They, yeah, they're busier, yeah. I'm sure, right? But you know, uh, obviously, I, you know, uh, we I'd run into them all the time at, at the Googleplex there. Yeah, I, I just thought that was funny that that's what he said to you in the process of this. So a couple of years, you were there a lot. They gave you access to all kinds of people. You didn't feel at all like they were really guarding access to you. I mean, it seems like yeah. the things you talk about in the book, they do feel like you really are talking about things in a very factual way, moments, scary moments, whatever. They, they really gave you access to these well, things. Well, an interesting thing happened. Well, one thing that I didn't mention before is I had access to a number of projects at Google that were not public yet, mm -hmm. so in, well in advance. And this was something that even happened on that trip there. During that trip, uh, one thing they did was they went to every office. They would explain to the engineers of that office. Here's what we're up to in Mountain View. And the engineers in that office, whether it was in Bangalore or Tokyo or, or Haifa, you know, would say, and here's what we're doing here. And you know, one of the things that the uh, engineers at Mountain View talked about was this product called Chrome, this browser they were working on. And that, that was a year away. So they knew that they could trust me to keep my mouth shut uh, and not pre-announce products there. But knowing about a lot of things that were going on in Google that weren't public opened up a level of trust. Because people can talk to me about something which wasn't public. I think they came to feel that they could unburden in other things. And I also have to give Google a lot of credit. When 
and a lot of times I'd be in an interview, and there would be